I have a heart-wrenching and distressing story tonight out of Nigeria, the most populous black nation in the world. According to various reports, ordinary Nigerian families have been forced to sell their homes, land, use their savings to pay off hundreds of thousands of dollars in ransom to get their children back from Boko Haram-inspired kidnappers. According to Reuters, more than a thousand students have been abducted from schools since December. Although some have been found, about 300 remain missing. In some cases, kidnappers have asked for more than $100,000 for the return of children. And although the Nigerian president has warned parents not to pay the ransoms for fear that it will only encourage the gangs, kidnappers have reportedly taken in more than $18 million from June 2011 to March of last year and $4.9 million just this year. This according to SBM Intelligence and the Nigerian Department of State Services. One expert is quoted as saying it's the most thriving, most lucrative industry in Nigeria and has become an enticing profession for young men during a tumultuous ec economic crisis. Joining me now to discuss is the founder of Bring Back Our Girls NYC, Mojubahulu. Moju uh, and I will let you pronounce the rest of your name so I won't risk garbling it uh, for our audience. Please pronounce your entire name for our audience, please. Mojuba Olu, Olufunke Okome. Beautiful. And I'm going to figure that out before the night is over. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So the, uh, these criminal gangs are building a, an enterprise out of kidnapping for ransom uh, in, 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 and making an industry of it in Nigeria. How did this pick up so quickly and, and become so widespread? Um, well, you know, the Nigerian economy is very much dependent on um, earnings from petroleum sales. And um, I think one can kind of see a coincidence between the tanking of that market and the uptick in um, kidnapping. Um, but also there's a lot of, um, Nigeria has a very large youth population and there's high unemployment among the youth in particular. Plus, you know, the area of the um, country where majority of the kidnappings are being done is also um, an area where the extent of inequality is much higher than in um, other parts of the country. Now, I also think that um, the inability of the security forces to ensure the uh, safety, you know, of Nigerians and corruption inefficiency in these um, organizations has also contributed to the kind of impunity that is being shown by the kidnappers. Um, right. So I, I don't think this is the most lucrative business in Nigeria, but you know, for people who are in dire straits, it's a very um, attractive prospect, I guess in terms right. of uh, being able to have an income. Th these, these kidnappings are uh, described as Boko Haram inspired. Is Boko Haram itself in any way connected to these kidnappings? Uh, the thing is, I don't know that anybody knows for sure. But I think because Boko Haram was successful in the abductions that it did, and it was able to extort money in return for um, some of the Chibok girls uh, that were abducted, uh, probably also inspired some of these Nigerians now call them bandits to do what they're doing. But I think too that um, if you have the depth of mm. poverty that there is and lack of too many viable ways of making um, legal and respectable income that it might create incentives for desperate people to do what they're doing.
The president of Nigeria uh, kind of warned parents not to pay these ransoms because they will only encourage more kidnappings. But what other uh, option do the parents have other than to pay the ransom? What does the president want the parents to do if they have a child who is missing and has been kidnapped? Well, I totally disagree with the president. Um, and I would actually imagine that if um, the children that were kidnapped were the president's children, this would not be his perspective. Also, if, um, if the government of Nigeria wants to discourage parents from negotiating with bandits and terrorists and, uh, you know, kidnappers, uh, it has to show good faith effort that shows that it is serious and able to control these uh, insecure situations. And, you know, there's no confidence that the government can do this, you know. So it is just, um, it's unfortunate that this is what the government is saying, because mm -hmm. if those were my children, I would do everything to rescue my children. Mm -hmm. And I, my heart goes out to the parents because they, they have no other options. And actually, you know, some children have been killed by these, um, by these kidnappers. If, as you say, you know, this, these kidnappings are connected to the economic crisis in northwestern Nigeria, what do you think the government can and should be doing to deal with the economic crisis that would kind of put a dent in the motivation for these kidnappings? Okay, so I, I think there's a, you know, the, the causes are multiple. There's the economic. There's the fact that the state's personnel also have proven to be incompetent and um, incapable of either investigating or, you know, arresting or prosecuting the people who are doing this. So in terms of, um, of unemployment, I mean, I think that the government needs to uh, have more serious unemployment mitigating schemes. There has to be enough jobs. In Nigeria, you get good jobs when you are well connected. Education doesn't help you. And, you know, we have to stop this. So there has to be mm -hmm. safety nets created for people so that they don't reach the mm -hmm. level of desperation that would lead them to this. Also, right. training, better training for the security forces and seriousness in doing all the things that the state needs mm -hmm. to do because constitutionally, mm -hmm. the duty of any state is to, at the fundamental base, provide for the right. security of the people. And so the government right. is not doing its job and it is unfortunate and it is saddening and it's also leading to a catastrophic situation. Mojuba Ulu, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it tonight. Your Black History Moment is next.